Okay, we are back to talk about the pesto. So many different variations of pesto. This one's a kale pesto. Uh, we're using pistachios, which is again, a little unusual. Traditional pesto being a Genovese, Genovese dish with the basil, the garlic, the pine nuts. This is gonna, the basil is being substituted by uh, the kale. And this is approximately three cups, which I think the recipe calls for. I left this here just to say that, you know, we really don't want too many of the big stems of the kale going in there. That's going to be definitely a little too tough and chewy even for a, for a blender. So get the kale, uh, pistachios that I toasted. I think I did say in the recipe, you can use any kind of nuts you want, walnuts, uh, pine nuts, but again, pistachios is just a little bit different. Uh, some of the reserved garlic that we had earlier, grated Parmesan cheese, lemon juice, and some olive oil. We will also put some salt and pepper in this as well. So pretty much, again, this is, again, I, I think really kind of a simple, quick go-to dish. We're going to make this pesto and this will stay good in the refrigerator for, you know, quite a while. As long as we don't get too much air on it, it should actually stay uh, a really nice color green. What you can do sometimes is you can take the pest, uh, pesto, you can take the kale leaves, you can blanch and shock those leaves and they get become a really, really nicer, brighter green. And then it'll actually stay greener longer, but we're in a bit of a hurry. So kale, the garlic. God, the garlic smells good for some reason. I don't know. The uh, toasted pistachios. Parmesan cheese. Lemon juice. We're going to put some olive oil in there to kind of start it and get it going. We want, like I said, roughly a quarter of a cup. We may need a little bit more. You know, the one thing about savory cooking, which is what we're doing right here, is that there are very, very few, if any, absolutes. So it's, it's, I suggested a quarter of a cup. If we need a little bit more, that's fine. If you have a little bit more or less kale, that's fine too. Let's, uh, I'm gonna sneak over here and get some salt and pepper. Okay, the cheese is salty, but we're still gonna need some salt and we're still gonna need some pepper. Hard to see that on the video probably, but they're definitely coming out with nice chunks and there's really not much that you can substitute for fresh cracked black pepper. We're good, let's put the lid on, let's see what we got going here. Tamp that down. Put a little more olive oil in there. And I, and I think I may have said something about thinning this down perhaps. Uh, if it gets too thick in the blender, we can, you can use a little water stock. That, that works also. Just a little bit of water to facilitate the blending. Again, olive oil is part of the dish itself. It's not just a, a medium to get this pureed. So I would suggest using a, a pretty decent olive oil because you want that flavor. Making 
some headway. What we don't want to do is blend this for too long because then we actually end up heating up the mixture and we don't want to do that. This is supposed to be a raw mixture. I've got probably more closer to probably like a half a cup of olive oil in here right now. Give it a little taste. We'll use the other end. Delicious. Got a great lemony flavor to it. Barely a little bit of hint of garlic. So we already have hard garlic in the white beans. Got a little garlic in here. We'll talk about the crostinis in a second. I think that's ready to go. Nice color. So let's put this uh, let's put this dish together. So, the crostinis, I think I mentioned in the, uh, in the recipe, took about maybe nine, 10 minutes in the, uh, in the oven at 350. What you can do when they come out, I would take a little bit of salt and go over the top. And then also, not a bad idea to take a little bit of garlic clove that's been cut and just kind of rub that on top like that. I took the liberty of doing some of the other ones already. And again, just adds kind of a, a perfumey type of garlic to it. So. These are still warm. We want to serve this the beans warm, the pesto, just room temperature. So I tend to like the smaller beans. I know I put the uh, cannellini beans in the recipe, but I like the smaller beans because you can get a little more bean in the, uh, in the recipe, or in, on, on the cuisine, I should say. Okay. That is going to be good. And I like to dish them up on a separate plate, and we can move them to a different plate for the presentation. If you're by yourself, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But if you're entertaining friends, which we are, we, Marie and I are entertaining our friends. Oops. That's gonna be good. What do you think, Marie? Delicious. Delicious. And clearly you can see we have more than enough pesto. This pesto can be used as a dip by itself like that. It can be used to toss in some pasta. And anywhere you would actually use pesto would be a great application for that kale pesto. And this is just some shaved parm we're going to put on top. So it's kind of like a finished product. Okay. Oh, mama, these are gonna be good. Simple. I think, maybe that's just me, but I think it's actually relatively simple because uh, there are some things that you can certainly do ahead of time. The crostinis can be done ahead of time. The pesto can be done ahead of time. The white beans can be done ahead of time. And actually they can be uh, refrigerated. And, um, the pesto can clearly be uh, done ahead of time and refrigerated. So everything else is a very, very simple, quick go-to dish. Great little first course, certainly worthy of um, a very casual dinner, which is what we're gonna be attempting here in the next uh, couple of videos. So uh, there you have it, the white beet crostini with the uh, kale pesto and some shaved parm on top. Looking forward to uh, attacking the entree in just a second. We'll be right back.